Lennon and McCartney once observed, it was a hard day's night, but in the end, Purdue defeated both Mother Nature and Virginia Tech, knocking off the Hokies 24-17 last week in a game that went 8 hours and 35 minutes from opening kickoff until final whistle. The Boilermakers now 1-1 one and one on the season, and they'll try to run their, run their winning streak to two games when they take on the Syracuse Orange on Saturday night in sold-out ross Aid Stadium. Good evening, everybody, from Walk-Ons in West Lafayette. It is the Ryan Walter Show. We're along with the head coach tonight until the top of the hour. We've also got a couple of the captains on this year's football team with us. Nick Scorton and Hudson Card will be joining us a little bit later on. We're on Facebook on the Purdue Athletic site. If you let us know where you're watching from tonight, we'll get a shout-out to you. If you have a question for the coach, you can follow that as well. And we're on the Purdue football uh, site on Twitter, or X, or whatever it is it's called these days. We will have the head coach with us when we come back. It is the Ryan Walter Show, presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports. one of college football's greatest atmospheres, Lane Stadium. It's an orange sellout. This is the side of the day. The side of the day we're going to be for the rest of the year. The side that we're going to be for the rest of the year. So we get in the locker room, we're going to say, I told you so. I told you so. Y'all boys run. Hell yeah. Y'all boys run. Hell yeah. To the outside, he's got a wide open Max Clair is inside the red zone. Here's Maccabee again, left side, breaks the tackle. Maccabee inside the five, touchdown, Purdue. Remember, the theme is still discipline, all right? It's still this, we got 37, let's go get that first down. Finally, clear skies here in Blacksburg, Virginia Lane Stadium, and we're going to resume football. Here's Wells. Looking left, it throws a pick. Picked off by Cam Allen. Tracy gets the carry. Tracy, big hole. Tracy, touchdown, Purdue. Here's Wells. Over the middle. And picked off by Finneman, the freshman. Card throwing over the middle, and that's complete. Deion Burks, the redshirt sophomore, makes the play. Soon as he got it. Nick Scorton grabbed him, brought him down. He's got it now. Tracy up the middle. Tracy spins. He's still on his feet. Tracy inside the 20 and brought down at the 13-yard line. Design run for Card. Touchdown, Purdue. Here's Wells. Under pressure. As you talk about it, sacked. Nick Scorton. Go! show we're live at walk-ons in the purdue memorial union where it's always game day with a taste of louisiana the Rorman automotive group is supporting your boilermakers as a presenting sponsor of the ryan walter show and proud partner of purdue athletics Rorman automotive group boiler up and hammered down and ryan i don't know where to start with last week's game let's start with mother nature we knew coming in, and we talked a little bit about this last week, there was a possibility of storms. There was a possibility we'd have delays. I don't think anybody would have imagined delays that totaled almost six hours. So what exactly did you all do in the locker room for six hours? Um, a lot, actually. Um, you know, first it was, can we get the nutrition needed to fuel the guys? And, and our nutrition staff did a great job of, of finding local vendors to, to deliver some food. Um, we played a lot of spades, played some dominoes. Uh, I know guys are on the offensive end. We're playing hangman on the whiteboard. Um, but really, you know, when we went into the locker room for the first time, there was talks that we might be able to play at 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And so guys were still in the game and in, in that mode. Um, but once we found out it wasn't going to be till you know, 6 or 7, then, you know, take the pads off, relax, get your mind off the game, and, and when it's time to go play again, we'll just go through our pregame routine and we'll be ready. There were all sorts of rumors floating around the stadium, and, of course, not really nobody knew what was going to happen. How close did that game come to not happening at all? Um, there were talks about, you know, what canceling the game and making a no contest. Um, so I asked our administration, you know, what when do our pilots time out? And 4 o'clock in the morning was when they timed out. So uh, we were adamant to <coughs> Virginia Tech's admin that if, as long as we played by 1 a.m., we'd, we'd be good. 
So coming off that first week, we wanted to go play, man. Absolutely. Um, you mentioned you had to get some food in. You also had to dry them out a little bit because it was raining when you went back into the locker room. And so I guess that gave you an opportunity to at least start with a fresh slate, although – uh, the rain did continue, but it, it didn't continue after you came back out, right? Yeah. I mean, it was dry after that. <clears throat> yeah, you know, and, and luckily, man, when we when we went into the locker room, it wasn't raining real bad. Um, it was just lightning. It was lightning like crazy, and it was lightning like crazy for a long time. Yeah. Um, so, you know, our guys, when they took off their pads and, and changed socks and stuff like that, we were good to go. Uh, you came back out. You start, restarted the game. Well, first of all, the game got off to a pretty good start. You go down and drive and, and score in your opening possession. You get them to kick the ball, and then you're starting to drive again, and then the weather stops. I think the most difficult thing for everybody is you just didn't know what the timing was going to be because you kept looking at the radar, right. and the, ra the reds and the yellows and everything just kept popping up. So it, it could have been three, four, five, as it turned out, five and a half hours. Yeah, it's just something, you know, you just got to kind of deal with. We all were excited to go play. Um, we had prepared really well that week, and so we just we're just waiting. I don't, I don't know how else to des yeah. describe it. We're just, just waiting. You know, f uh, for those keeping track at home, they had 4.41 inches of rain in less than five hours, which was the second most they had ever had in recorded history in wow. one day in Blacksbury. What we were talking before we went on air, I thought they did an unbelievable job getting the field dry. Yeah, I've never seen, like, a, a drainage system that works that effectively because um, while there was, like, the torrential downpour – you could see the the water like running off the field, mm -hmm. and then uh, Virginia Tech's grounds crew they had like this vacuum that kind of had a hose that went to like some sewage drain, and was just pumping the water out of the field. And so when we got to game two, basically, yeah. um, the field was dry. It wasn't spongy. You know, I think we had two guys slip in the totality of the game, and that was it. So you got uh, back on the field, and you, you were able to continue the roll. You're up 17 to nothing, and then for about a 10-minute span, things went the other way. Yep. What was even more unusual, you didn't go back into the locker room. Neither team went back in because you were trying to shorten the halftime to 10 minutes. How did you try to get everybody back on track during that 10-minute uh, session? Yeah, you know, we just sort of reassessed where we were at um, and preached the things that we were preaching throughout the week, which was just being disciplined, you know, do, everybody doing their job, snapping and snap out, um, you know, paying attention to the details with alignment, with assignment, where are my eyes? Because um, when, we, when we play with discipline, like, it's, it looks special. And so um, that was the message, and, and we had 10 minutes to sort of figure out what kind of adjustments we need to, needed to make, and, you know, it, it ultimately – that 10 minutes helped us win a game. Now, we've seen on the sidelines, you're typically a pretty calm and collected guy. You got a little exercise late in the first half, and we talked there was a questionable uh, late hit call on Dylan Thieneman uh, that really set up, uh, instead of them having to kick a field goal because it was on a third down play, yeah. they wound up scoring a touchdown. Did you ever get an explanation of whether they said it was late, low, or, or what it was? No, um, I did not get a, a full explanation, which is why I was so animated. Um, but, you know, then, and I, I, I don't know. At the I'll end just, of the I'll day. Leave it, I'll leave it at that because I'll, I'll start getting animated again. I, I understand. And we don't want that. We, we're all good now. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll talk more about the second half when we come back. It's the Ryan Walter Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. I'm proud as hell of y'all for a couple reasons, man. For us to go through uh, the delay we had to go through, man. Y'all stayed yeah. locked in and went out there and got a dub, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Easy, okay? We was up, what was it, 17 nothing? Yeah. Yeah. They come, they close the gap, but what are we talking about? Yeah. You stay yeah. disciplined. Yeah. Stay disciplined. Yeah. And you did. You did. Eddie had no more points on the board. We went and got down, got a score on the yeah. roll with a five hour yeah. delay. So everybody that's on the trail rush is going to get a damn game ball. Yeah. 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 Proud of you all for hanging in there, getting this thing done. But most of all, Proud of this young cat right here, yes, man. Sir. First, yeah. first, 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 first,
Chloe Chacoin. Don't let Kentucky side out and take out the 2,500 people that are in this building. There's Wilson again. And that's blocked back by Purdue. Colvin and Heaney. Getzinger. Here's Hudson. She ties it. Once again, Anderson back to serve. 14 service errors for UK in this game. Anderson with Purdue trying to close out their fourth straight win. Teeler has that blocked. And then Hudson finishes off Kentucky here at Holloway. Boilers win in five. That's four straight for Dean Shondell's Purdue Boilermakers. Kentucky with a hard-fought battle, but they come up just short. Hey. The 2023 Purdue football season is presented by uh, the delay we had University for Working Adults. Earn a degree you're proud of and employers respect. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. We'll mention this a few times tonight because next week's game is a Friday night game. A change in schedule with the coaches show will be here next Tuesday at 6.05, and then we'll go back to Wednesdays after that, but next Tuesday for the next Ryan Walter show. Checking in on Facebook, hello from Fort Wayne, Huntsville, Alabama, Indianapolis, Glen Lake, and West Lafayette, Elkhart, Indiana, Zionsville. Uh, Matt says great resilience, and I want to talk about resilience a little bit uh, as, as we go forward here. Wake Forest, North Carolina, and Westfield. We'll get some more after this. This team, I think we've seen in the first couple of weeks, you're looking for an identity every football season, and I think resilient right now is one word that would describe the squad. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, you know, the, the only question I had going into the season was how we would handle adversity. Um, you know, you got a new staff, you got a locker room full of new faces um, that, you know, are playing together for the first time, and, and a lot of the guys are playing in roles that they've, that they are in for the first time, and so... It was, you know, when things get tough, like how are we going to respond? How are we going to act? Um, and I thought I knew how we would, and, and that was confirmed after week one. Um, just, you know, guys diving into the details, not pointing fingers, you know, really self-assessing where they were at and, and holding themselves and each other accountable. Um, and also our staff being able to adapt and adjust uh, from game one to game two. And I was very proud of that. After a lot of points and a short span in that first half, the second half was just the opposite. It was a defensive struggle, and you got the sense as the fourth quarter started, it was like your old gym class days where the next score wins. Uh, you got uh, the one thing that the offense did on that game-winning drive, they converted third downs. I think yeah. they had three or four of them on yep. that drive. Yeah, that, you know, third downs were something that we really harped on uh, because of the, the lack of success the, the first week. That really, in my opinion, told the story of, of why we didn't win that game was our, our inefficiency on both sides of the ball on third down. And, you know, we were able to keep the chains moving on offense and we were able to get, get off the field on defense um, against Virginia Tech. And, and that was large in part due to, our, you know, resulting in our success. Well, it was great to see Garrett Miller back out on the field to start the game. He caught your first pass, but I thought Max Clare was outstanding for you. I think you, as people are starting to see the t potential that this redshirt freshman has. Yeah, he's, you know, he's uber athletic, you know, very smart kid, very competitive. Um, you know, he, he adds value in the run game and obviously can catch the ball and, and make people miss um, in the air. So, you know, him, you know, uh, Drew Bibber and, um, and Garrett, you know, as, as he gets comfortable and um, confident in, in his rehab process, you know, we got that room is very, very talented. You know, one of the fun things in athletics is to see if things can change from week to week. Week one, you got a touchdown late against Fresno State, but the defense couldn't make that stop. This time, same situation. Eight minutes left, you get the stop, and all of a sudden the defense has to come up with a stop. They got out to midfield, but that was as far as they got. Yeah, you know, I was very, like I said, I'm very proud of um, the adjustments they made at halftime, uh, the way they played. You know, they were selfless in, in doing their assignment. Um, and, and when they do that, like when, when our guys just do their job and not seek out plays and just allow the game to come to them, um, it looks special. Like it looks, it looks like it's supposed to look. And, and what I've said about this team since before the season started, you know, we'll, we'll continue to improve as the year goes. You know, these are all new, new staff, new guys, new schemes. 
Um, a lot of them are playing in the Big Ten for the first time. Um, and so, you know, this, this team will only get better as the year goes. We're getting close to playoff time in Major League Baseball, and usually the most successful teams at the end are teams that have closers. Somebody can come in and shut the door. I mentioned to you after the game, it's nice to have a guy like number 45 that you can hand the ball off to in a tight game late, knowing he's going to get you those big yards. Yeah, you know, obviously Mock is, does a great job. I think Tyron Tracy and, and Dylan Downing also do a, a phenomenal job. It, you know, the three of them, whoever's in there, there's, there's no drop-off. Uh, but I thought the real key for us um, in the ground game and, and really offensively period was the progress the O-line made from week one to week two. Um, they really they really solidified themselves, played with a little more grit, a little more uh, nastiness to them. Um, and that allowed Hudson to, to step up and deliver some pretty accurate throws and also created some running lanes for our running backs. You mentioned you didn't get all that wet before you went into the locker room the first time. I heard you got a little wet after <laughs> the game. We kept waiting for you to come on for the post game and say, well, he had an unscheduled shower he had to take. Uh, you, you, you had a pretty happy team in the locker room, didn't you? Yeah, we did. I was not expecting that. You know, it's, it's a regular season game. Um, all I was thinking about was, do we have enough time? On, or, you know, is the clock down enough to where we can kneel out yep. uh, the game and, and win it? Um, and... and I was thinking about taking my headsets off and going to shake the head coach's hand. Um, the next thing I know, I had Gatorade all over me, and it was freezing cold. But they but it was cool. I think, didn't they rinse you off in the locker room afterward? Didn't, I, I heard you got another shower yeah, got in there. An, yeah, another shower in the locker room. Um, so definitely didn't want to show up to the uh, – That Gatorade's awfully sticky. you got to get that stuff off. It's sticky and it's cold. I was, yeah, I was I'm freezing. sure it was. All right, we're going to be back with the coach in two more minutes. It's the Ryan Walter Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. It's one of college football's greatest atmospheres, Lane Stadium. It's an orange sellout. This is the side of day. The side of day we're going to be for the rest of the year. The side we're going to be for the rest of the year, so we get in the locker room, we're going to say, I told you so. I told you so. Y'all boys run. Hell yeah. Y'all boys run. Hell yeah. Four, two, three. Four, two, three. Four. To the outside, he's got a wide open. Max Clare is inside the red zone. There's Maccabee again. Left side breaks the tackle. Maccabee inside the five. Touchdown, Purdue. The theme is still discipline, all right? Fair. It's still this. We got 37. Let's go get that first down. Finally, clear skies here in Blacksburg, Virginia Lane Stadium, and we're going to resume football. Here's Wells looking left and throws a pick. Picked off by Cam Allen. Tracy gets to carry. Tracy, big hole. Tracy, touchdown, Purdue. Here's Wells. Over the middle, and picked up by Finneman, the freshman. The card throwing over the middle, and that's complete. Deion Burks, the redshirt sophomore, makes the play. Soon as he got it, Nick Gordon grabbed him, brought him down. He's got it now. Tracy up the middle. Tracy spins. He's still on his feet. Tracy inside the 20 and brought down at the 13-yard line. Design run for Card. Touchdown, Purdue. Here's Wells. Under pressure. As you talk about it, set. Nick Scorton. Go! In the Purdue Memorial Union, everyone needs a little playing time. Hello from Charlotte, North Carolina. Tom survived the Blacksburg Monsoon. So did we, and, and we're glad that we did. Lori from Remington is checking in. Hillsdale, Michigan. Traverse City, Michigan. Kokomo, Indiana. Chesterton, and uh, I think we've been to Glen Lakes before. Uh, Columbus, Indiana. And uh, I think that we're caught up. Boonville. Of course Boonville is there. Of course Boonville is there because... Boonville is uh, Devin Mockaby country. Yeah. Uh, you, you had some other t uh, talents that really stepped forward on offense. And one guy I thought has really stepped up the first couple of weeks, Abdul Rahman Yassin, uh, who's battled some injury problems here his first couple of years, but he's equaled his career high in both of the first two games. And he had a huge catch for you in the fourth quarter on Saturday. Yeah, you know, he, he makes huge catches for us in practice all the time as well. Um, he's, he's 
ultra consistent, uh, very mature, uh, very wise, and, and just does the right thing all the time. And I'm happy as hell that he's on our team. You know, it's, it's difficult. We talked about trying to mesh all these guys together, and when you've got Hudson coming in who's new to the program and you've got some receivers, some of them were here before, but some are coming in. In the era of the portal system now, how hard is it to get guys meshed in, and, and how much then does that put pressure on the summer to get some of that stuff done? Yeah, I think, you know, the summer is, is hugely important, just um, getting on the same page and building chemistry and, you know, I give our guys a lot of credit. They they took care of the summer the way you're supposed to, uh, large in part because of, of HUD and, um, you know, the player-run practices. Um, but, you know, if you look at it like – if you look at the transfer portal like you do NFL free agency, like they're – people make it work in the league. Why couldn't you make it work in college? And um, I think our staff did a good job of, of getting like-minded people in the building. Um, I think everybody enjoys the, the game for the game. Um, and so because of because of ball and because the locker room is so diverse, when you have a common ground um, like football, then you have uh, an opportunity to have organic relationships and uh, real chemistry. And I think our guys have that. Internal leadership has to be so important, though, to make that happen. You've got two of your five yeah. captains, and, and you can't be there all the time. And these, these guys have to be able to police themselves. Absolutely. And the two guys that, that we've got here, Hudson Card and uh, Nick Scorton, are, are consummate professionals, you know what I mean? Like, I know there's they're college age uh, young men, but you know they conduct themselves um, with the utmost maturity. Um, they they play and practice the right way. Uh, they're, they're model citizens in the community, great leaders, and and fun to be around. You said uh, early in the season, before the season started, you were going to put the guys on the field that were going to help you win the most. And I think a lot of eyebrows were raised when you put a true freshman back there at safety in Dylan Thienemann. And well, he's only become the first Purdue freshman in program history to intercept a pass in each of his first two games, and he leads you in tackles. He's really a force back there. Yeah, he is. You know, the, the one thing I love about football is it doesn't care, like, how old you are. It doesn't care if you're black, white, or whatever. It doesn't, doesn't care what you're socioeconomic background is, doesn't care what happened to you yesterday. It, all that matters is uh, what happens between those white lines from, from snap to whistle. And because of that, you know, we, we as coaches view the evaluation process through that lens. And Dylan Thieneman was, was by far and away the, the best at that job in our defense. Um, and he makes those plays all the time in practice. And so it was, it was you know, it didn't blink an eye or didn't think twice about whether or not he should be a starter. Like, not only should he be a starter, but he's one of our best players. Uh, we landed a little bit after 1 o'clock in the morning on Sunday uh, after a long day. And I, I know coaches have to get right back into it. But I just wondered, from your, from your standpoint, how exhausted were you on Sunday? I, personally, I, that was about as tired as I've been after a game. You know, I didn't, I didn't really get tired until uh, I was a little tired last night. Yeah. Um, you know, you just you're euphoric and and your mind's racing because of the game um and then there's as soon as the game's over you're like okay i gotta start preparing for right. next week and so um, in this profession especially this time of year your body's clock is changes a little bit um and so you know i'll, I'll sleep after the season when the vacation go. hits uh have you gotten through all the text messages yet i did i did yeah there's a lot of them. It I'm was sure a lot. It was blowing it up. Was, it was a lot. All right, we're going to talk to Nick Scorton when we come back. He had three and a half tackles for loss last week, including a sack. This is the Ryan Walter Show, presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Joined now by Keena Turner, uh, one of the all-time great Boilermakers and uh, such a key part of that 1979 season. Keena, the defense came up with five takeaways against Michigan that day, blocked a punt and held the Wolverines under 260 yards. Aside from the talent, which you had a very talented defense, but schematically, what made the junk defense difficult to play against? Wow, I, you know, I mean, I think one, it always was like the, the players themselves. You know, we had, you know, we had some, some horses up front, and, and Leon Burnett, he, you know, just did a fabulous job, uh, you know, allowing, uh, that defense to take advantage of the skill that it had. So, you know, it was called, nicknamed the junk defense because we did just about everything. And I think uh, 
the best thing we did was just allow the talent to play. I remember sitting in the stands that day and we were all talking and excited. Not only are we beating Michigan, we're beating Michigan up. Well, that was probably a bad thought to have because all of a sudden, everything turned. They got it down to 24-21 and they're inside your 10. They're at your two yard line with a chance to win the game. Do you remember that last series very much and, and the big play that James Looney made at the end? You know, those pressure situations, uh, you know, to be able to stay calm and look to make big plays. And I think that was a part of kind of what, you know, those defenses became for us is that we, you know, not relied on big plays, but had confidence that we could make plays in key moments um, uh, to, you know, to have some success. This time it's delay, and that's Heaney with a solo block. And one by Kentucky. Free ball for the boiler, Shakoin unleashes. Boy, Shakoin. Don't let Kentucky side out and take out the 2,500 people that are in this building. Here's Wilson again. And that's blocked back by Purdue. Colvin and Heaney. Getzinger. Here's Hudson. She ties it. Tuzzo gets this one over cleanly. Anderson serves Hudson off the block. Tuzzo keeps it alive. Now delay has it blocked down. That's Raven Colvin, one of the leaders of this Purdue group. Once again, Anderson back to serve. 14 service errors for UK in this game. Anderson with Purdue trying to close out their fourth straight win. Teeler has that blocked. And then Hudson finishes off Kentucky here at Holloway. Boilers win in five. That's four straight for Dean Shondell's Purdue Boilermakers. Kentucky for the hard fought. Thank and recognize members of the Black and Gold Club who support Purdue Athletics through their sponsorship at the highest level. Black and Gold Club members include Indiana Packers, Molson Coors, Purdue Federal Credit Union, Purdue Global, Rorman Automotive Group, and Wabash. Each are great partners of Purdue Athletics, and we thank them. And we thank Nick Scorton for joining us tonight. Nick is a sophomore outside linebacker for Bryan, Texas. Now, people were, I think, a little surprised when the roster came out, and last year there was a Nick Carraway on the roster. This year, Nick Scorton, can you explain uh, the change in the last name? Um, honestly, I really just wanted to uh, honor my dad this year. So uh, we talked about it, and I changed my last name because I'm the only sibling that had my mom's last name. Gotcha. So, yes, sir. So it's Nick Scorton, S-C-O-U-R-T-O-N, for those scoring at home. Uh, you've got a new, new coordinator this year. You've got a new scheme. Let's talk about what you're able to do in this brand-new defense that Ryan Walters has brought in. Um, honestly, I feel like, like as a player, I have a lot of, like, like, I feel like I'm more in tune with the game because I have to think about more things instead of just, like, go forward, rush the quarterback. Like, I'm taking tight ends on wheels, running backs on wheels. I'm folding over the top when I get pulls and things, just, just things like that. Like, I feel like I'm more into the game. Uh, you, uh, we had one of your running mates, Cajun Jenkins, on earlier this year. Now, he said you had a bet, clearly legal and clearly off the, yeah, uh, you yeah. know, just a friendly bet, about the first sack. He got that, <laughs> but now you can have a bet about the most sacks because you've tied him there, and you also had three and a half tackles for loss. Talk about your game on Saturday. Um, with KJ, um, it's amazing to play beside him. I feel like I'm very confident that he's holding his own on the other side, first of all. But um, the game, um, I feel like I was very, like, I was amped up. I was excited to play. I sat in a locker room for five hours. So um, I was excited. And honestly, I just let the game come to me. I was doing my job. When I got the opportunity to rush a quarterback, I was pulling on my best moves. And I feel like the, the plays just happened. Uh, you coming from Texas, I would get, did you ever have weather delays down there in high school? I bet you didn't have a five and a half hour delay. No, never a five and a half. Right. Um, I think my sophomore year of high school I did. I had one. So what did you do? Were you in the hangman group or were you playing cards? or what? How did you, how did you kill the time in the locker room? I feel like I was, a, I was a nomad. I was everywhere. I was with Huddy and them watching the game for a little bit, um, chopping it up with the receivers, messing with the old linemen. Took a little nap. Um, 
<laughs> I walked around, chopped it up with the Virginia Tech like camera crew. I was just messing around. Uh, coach said they brought some food, and what were you able to eat while you were waiting? I actually ate two like barbecue sandwiches before the game. It w did not sit well. Did uh, not sit I was well going to ask. You know, that's a little bit out of your routine. You got to be a little bit careful when you're doing <laughs> that now, right? Mm -hmm. uh, talk about playing at home this week and playing in the, in a night game. You played a couple of night games last year, but it's going to be an electric atmosphere Saturday night at Ross Aid. Oh, I'm so excited. I remember um, Penn State game last year, first game of my college career. I was super excited. So I'm just excited to see um, Ross Aid at night again with the new tunnel. You're a youngster on this team, only a sophomore, and yet you were voted a team captain. What does that mean to you? Uh, that means the world to me. Um, to know that my guys trust me enough to put me in that position, and um, it just it's uh, like a huge honor. What brought you to Purdue in the first place? What was it about the Boilermakers that made you come up here from Texas? Honestly, just like the great education. Uh, when I was getting recruited here, like I thought the cave was the coolest thing in the world. That's like where we study and stuff. Um, just like the den of defensive ends, who doesn't want to be in that? Obviously, George. Um, Coach Hagan, when he was here, he was a big part of my recruitment process because um, he recruited me for a long time. And honestly, I just came here and I clicked with the guys and I just felt like I fit in the most here out of all the other schools I was getting recruited by. Have you laid in bed and thought about getting your name up there on that den of defensive oh, ends? All the time. Anytime I'm lifting, I'm just looking up there like, I'm going to be there. I have a feeling you've got a, an opportunity to do that. Uh, let's talk about running through the tunnel. You've done it once, but you haven't done it at night. How was that experience coming from your locker room through that new Tiller tunnel? Um, it was dope. Like, being able to walk by Coach Walters and my teammates, it was, it was super dope. I've never been in any, anything like that before. Uh, interesting game last year at Syracuse. Really a heartbreaking game. You had the lead late, and then uh, they scored the touchdown in the final second. So, you know, I don't know about revenge in college athletics, but it'd be awfully nice to pay them back no, and, for and sure. give them a loss coming in here. We've, we've, we have this game circled for sure. Well, uh, Nick, I, I think you've got some offensive linemen. The numbers circled because you put a number on them last week, and we hope you continue to do that to continued success, and uh, we hope you have a great season. Yes, sir. All right, we're going to talk to Hudson Card when we come back. It is the Ryan Walter Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. I'm proud as hell of y'all for a couple reasons, man. For us to go through uh, the delay we had to go through, man. Y'all stayed yeah. locked in and went out there and got a dub, right? Yes, sir. It wasn't easy, okay? We was up, what was it, 17 nothing? Yeah. Yeah. They come, they close the gap, but what are we talking about? You yes, stay disciplined. Hey, stay disciplined. And you did. You did. Hey, you had no more points on the board. We went and got down, got a score on a f***ing roll with a five-hour delay. So everybody that's on the trial run is going to get a damn game. Boom. Yeah. 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 Over day, proud of you all for hanging in there, getting this thing done. But most of all, proud of this young cat right here. Yes, man. First, first, yeah. first, first, yeah. for the boiler, Shacoin unleashes, Chloe Shacoin. Don't let Kentucky side out and take out the 2,500 people that are in this building. There's Wilson again, and that's blocked back by Purdue, Colvin and Haney. Getzinger, here's Hudson. She ties it. Once again, Anderson back to serve. 14 service errors for UK in this game. Anderson with Purdue trying to close out their fourth straight win. Teeler has that blocked. And then Hudson finishes off Kentucky here at Holloway. Boilers win in five. That's four straight for Dave Shondell's Purdue Boilermakers. Kentucky for the hard. Welcome back to the Ryan Walter Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. It's time for our Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Purdue student athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. 
Uh, let's talk about the nine players who saw the uh, field on the NFL uh, opening weekend. Raheem Mostert of the Miami Dolphins, 12, uh, 10 carries, 37 yards and a touchdown in a win over the Chargers. Derek Barnes with the Lions, six tackles, including a tackle for loss in the win over Kansas City. In that game, the Chiefs defensive end, George Karloftis, seven tackles, a tackle for loss and a pass breakup. Rondale Moore with Arizona had three catches for 33 yards in the loss to Washington. Juwan Bentley of New England had nine tackles, including a tackle for loss in the loss to Philadelphia. Uh, Charlie Jones with Cincinnati returned three punts for 24 yards. In that game, Marcus Bailey had a tackle in their loss to Cleveland. David Bell for the Browns did not catch a pass in that game. And finally, Bryson Hopkins playing for the L.A. Rams had a catch for 21 yards in the win over Seattle. So nine players played. Eight players were either... Um, uh, inactive for the game or on the practice squad. So we will have more pro, pro boilers to talk about a little bit later on. Right now, we are talking with Hudson Card, who is a junior from Austin, Texas. You know, the last quarterback we had from Austin, Texas, turned out to be pretty successful. That Breeze guy was okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he was okay. <laughs> uh, you got a chance, I think, to talk to him when you were thinking about where you were going to go. What, uh, what kind of advice did he give you about here and West Lafayette in general? Yeah, uh, I FaceTimed him, actually, on my uh, official visit here, and um, you know, we grew up about 20 minutes away from each other. So, um, you know, in high school, we were rivals, the, the high school he went to and the high school I went to. So um, it's funny, the first thing he said uh, was just joking about that. And then um, he just kind of told me his experience, um, you know, being from Austin and then coming um, down here and um, just his, his experience in West Lafayette and, um, you know, football wise. And um, so he, he just gave kind of his advice, uh, which was really cool to hear. Coach Walters has talked about the fact that his first priority recruit was getting you out of the portal and getting you here. What was it then that brought you here, and what was the deciding factor to come to West Lafayette? Yeah, um, you know, obviously a, a big part of it was, um, you know, Coach Walters and Coach Harrell. Um, you know, I, I just felt that connection with them, um, you know, early on. And, you know, I thought, you know, offensively, um, Coach Harrell fit fit uh, my, game, my game well. And, um, you know, I came here. Uh, on a visit and really had no idea what to expect but um, you know I really enjoyed it here um, you know I thought I thought it was right for me and I prayed about it and um, you know kind of went with my gut and here I am. You, you knew that we had winners up here right because yeah, sometimes yeah, the guys yeah. from the south are a little surprised <laughs> about that. Yeah that, that's the one thing that was uh, a little hesitant for me but uh, I'll push through it. Uh, you mentioned Coach Harrell what about this offense really appeals to you? Yeah, um, you know, I think obviously, you know, you're throwing the ball around quite a bit and, um, you know, there, there's tempo involved as well. And, um, you know, you can put up some big numbers and, you know, Purdue alone has a has a good, um, you know, track record with quarterbacks and, um, you know, offensively they've always been solid. So, um, you know, as well as, you know, they, they always compete for championships as well. So, um, you know, that was a big reason why I came here. I think it says a lot. We talked about Nick Scorton earlier, the fact that he was voted a captain, the fact that you got here in January and still were able to get enough votes and, in fact, a lot of votes to become a captain. What does it mean to you to be considered a leader by your teammates? Yeah, it's a blessing. Um, it really is an honor. And, um, you know, when I first got here, obviously I didn't know anyone. So just, just trying to, you know, build relationships when I got here and um, understand, you know, everyone's personality because everyone's a little different and, um, you know, responds to, 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 to critique and other things like that differently. And, um, you know, when I got here, I just, you know, try to try to put my head down and work and, you know, gain the respect from the locker room. And, um, you know, as you do that, you can start being a little more vocal as time goes on. Uh, we were talking during the break. This thing on Saturday where we were there for, it seemed like, forever uh, was kind of fun to do once, but we never yeah. want to repeat it. What yeah. did you do during that five-and-a-half-hour delay? Uh, I kind of chilled, uh, you know, took, took the shoulder pads off and everything like that, um, you know, just kind of hung out. And, you know, honestly, it was kind of a cool, you know, bonding experience for, for our team. And um, like you said, you know, hopefully never again. But, um, you know, that one time was, um, was, a, was a cool experience, especially, um, you know, being on the road and getting the win. And, um, um, you know, but I kind of hung out and just chilled for a little bit, um, you know, watched, watched some other games. And then, you know, as game, game time rolled around, uh, started to lock back in. Talk me through that two-yard touchdown there on that proved to be the winner. It looked like you got a big gap there on the left side, put your foot in the ground, and, and you had to be pretty happy to see that goal line under your feet. <laughs> yeah, it was a good feeling uh, for sure. And, um, you know, shout out to the O-line and um, everything like that for opening it up for me. And um, it was actually kind of a, a different look than, um, what what we thought was coming, and um, so our guys did a good job, uh, you know, adjusting on the fly. 
We didn't expect that game to be a night game. It turned out to be for part of the game. This is a true night game, but I got to believe the Friday night lights at Texas have gotten you prepared for this. Uh, yeah, um, you know, high schools or uh, football in high school is pretty big in uh, Texas. And, um, you know, I think Lake Travis has, you know, prepared me um, well, you know, coming right out of high school. So, um, you know, I played in some big games at, you know, and obviously in high school and, um, you know, in my college career. So uh, I'm really excited to see Ross State at night. I um, heard it's a, a, a really, really cool experience. So, um, you know, looking forward to that. You know, we talked to Coach Walters earlier. It's nice to have a tandem or actually a trio like you have now in the backfield that you can hand the ball off to. All the pressure is not on you to get the yards through the air, although you can hand it off or you can run the ball a little bit too, and we've seen you do that. Yeah, um, you know, our running back room is, is really special. And, um, you know, no matter who's in there in the backfield with me, uh, I have complete confidence in them. And that's a great feeling for me. Um, and like you said, just take some pressure off of me. So, um, you know, obviously when you get the, the run game going, uh, it's a little bit easier to pass. So um, shout out to them and the line. The good news is the weather forecast looks great for Saturday. Enjoy the night. Let's get another Boilermaker victory. Appreciate it. All right, we'll have the head coach back with us after this. It's the Ryan Walter Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. It's one of college football's greatest atmospheres, Lane Stadium. It's an orange sellout. This is the day. The side day we're going to be for the rest of the year. The sign we're going to be for the rest of the year, so we get in the locker room, we're going to say, I told you so. Uh, I told you so. Y'all boys run. Hell yeah. Y'all boys run. Hell yeah. Y'all boys run. To the outside, he's got a wide open Max Clare is inside the red zone. There's Maccabee again, left side, breaks the tackle. Maccabee inside the five, touchdown, Purdue. The theme is still discipline, all right? Sir. It's still this. We got 37. Let's go get that first down. Finally, clear skies here in Blacksburg, Virginia Lane Stadium, and we're going to resume football. Here's Wells looking left and throws a pick. Picked off by Cam Allen. Tracy gets the carry. Tracy, big hole. Tracy, touchdown, Purdue. Here's Wells. Over the middle, and picked up by Finneman, the freshman. Card throwing over the middle, and that's complete. Deion Burks, the redshirt sophomore, makes the play. Soon as he got it, Nick Gordon grabbed him, brought him down. He's got it now. Tracy up the middle. Tracy spins. He's still on his feet. Tracy inside the 20 and brought down at the 13-yard line. Design run for Card. Touchdown, Purdue. Here's Wells. Under pressure. As you talk about it, set. Nick Scorton. Go! is presented by Purdue Global, Purdue's online university for working adults. Earn a degree you're proud of and employers respect. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. The Boilermakers and the Orange will kick off at 6.30 on Saturday night. Our pregame coverage will start here at uh, a 7.30 kickoff. We'll be on at 6.30, and you can watch our Facebook Live segment. Uh, Kelly Kitchell, Pete Quinn will join me at 6 o'clock. Again, a reminder, the Ryan Walter Show next week will be at 6.05 on Tuesday night because of that Friday night kickoff. Uh, back to Facebook, we've got Cherubusco in the house tonight with Crown Point. Uh, here's the, uh, I think the farthest from the pin contest winner is uh, Randy from Cartagena, Columbia, wow. who is watching the show from his beachside balcony. Good weather here. I'm guessing it's pretty good down there. Champagne is with us as well as Cape Coral, Florida. We did have somebody asking about injuries. I'll just tell you, we, we were not going to talk about injuries because you're required now. The Big Ten requires you to report those injuries a couple of hours before kickoff. And so that's when the world will find out who is playing and who's not playing on Saturday. I'm good with that. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the Syracuse Orange because we haven't talked about your opponent. Uh, they are off to a 2-0 start. And to say that they have run up some big numbers is a little bit of an understatement. 
Uh, they're averaging more than 56 points a game, and they've given up a total of one, count them, one touchdown this season. They lead the nation in scoring defense. Let's start with the offensive side. Garrett Schrader, their quarterback, we saw him last year able to throw and run the ball. What problems does he present? Yeah, you know, he's, he's a big kid, got a big arm. Um, you know, he's got experience now as well. Uh, throws a good deep ball, um, has guys that can go get it, and um, extends plays with his legs. And so we got to keep him corralled in the pocket. Um, and, and when he scrambles, got to have eyes on him because uh, a lot of the plays that they, they make are busted plays. You know, guy, you know, play breaks down, he extends the play, uh, guy gets open and, and hits a home run. So um, definitely got to do a good job of, of containing the quarterback. The other thing that they've been able to do, and of course a part of this is because they had two such lopsided games, they've been able to spread the wealth, and they've got a lot of different receivers involved in their package, but uh, really their offense goes with Schrader, and he's, he's the key to stopping in on there's, Saturday. Yeah, there's no doubt. It, you know, it, it is a quarterback-driven offense, and uh, so we got to make sure that we are in tune to how to affect and, and confuse and harass him. Defensively, they line up in a 3-3-5, but they move around a lot, and, and what you see at the beginning may not be what you see at the snap, and how, how difficult does that make it for uh, your quarterback and company? Yeah, really it's, you know, it's um, complicated for the offensive line. Um, you kind of can, can tell what they're going to be in from a back-end standpoint, like what, what kind of coverage is coming behind the front, uh, but they get to different variations of, of four down and, and pressures, in twist games, um, you know, the majority of their snaps. And so our guys got to do a, a good job of communicating and um, being being locked in to their assignment. For those who forgot about last year's game, Syracuse had a 10-point lead in the fourth quarter. Purdue came back and scored two touchdowns, including one with less than a minute to play to take a lead. But they had a penalty, an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the extra point, and then on the coach for coming out and asking about the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. Kicked off from the 10-yard line, which was a first for me. Uh, and Syracuse is able to take the ball in from the 50-yard line and go in and score the winning touchdown with seven seconds. Got a lot of different faces, but a lot of guys were there last year, and I'm sure that game is still etched in their memories. Absolutely. You know, it's the guys that have, have been here um, have talked about it and, and thought they'd let that one get away a year ago, and, you know, so we're, we're excited to go play. Holding the home court advantage and getting wins on the home field is really key to building a program, and I know that's an emphasis for you. Absolutely. You know, we're looking forward to a electric atmosphere at Ross Aid. Um, I've, I've heard what, what it's like to be um, in that stadium at night and, you know, to be a, a, a sold-out crowd. Um, it should be a, a fun and, and exciting environment, and, and we got to – we got to do our best to take care of business. All right, we've got the final segment of the Ryan Walter Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group coming up. It's the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. I'm proud as hell of y'all for a couple reasons, man. For us to go through uh, the delay we had to go through, man. Y'all stayed yeah. locked in and went out there and got a dub, right? Yes, sir. It wasn't easy, okay? We was up, what was it, 17 nothing? Yeah. Yeah. They come, they close the gap, but what are we talk about? You stay disciplined. Hey, disciplined. Stay disciplined. And you did. You did. Hey, you had no more points on the board. We went and got down, got a score on the main road with a five hour delay. So everybody that's on the trial rush is going to get a damn game ball. Yeah! Coach said, day, proud of you all for hanging in there, getting this thing done. But most of all, proud of this young cat right here, man. First, first, yeah. first, first For the boiler, Shacoin unleashes. Chloe Shacoin. Don't let Kentucky side out and take out the 2,500 people that are in this building. There's Wilson again. And that's blocked back by Purdue. Colvin and Haney. Getzinger. Here's Hudson. She ties it. Once again, Anderson back to serve. 14 service errors for UK in this game. Anderson with Purdue trying to close out their fourth straight win. Teeler has that blocked. 
And then Hudson finishes off Kentucky here at Holloway. Boilers win in five. That's four straight for Dave Shondell's Purdue Boilermakers. Kentucky with a hard-fought battle, but they come up just short. Hey. Motive Group is supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Ryan Walter Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Rorman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. Against, again, it's Purdue against Syracuse, 730 on Saturday night, and you're always focused on the present as a coach, but you also have to look to the future. Can't talk about specifics, but you got a lot of recruits coming here on Saturday night for what should be a great atmosphere. Yeah, we're excited about it. Um, you know, the the community here is, is phenomenal, and, and to bring potential uh, future Boilermakers here to see just how phenomenal it is is, is important. Um, and so I'm excited to, to put on a good good show and, and have uh, talented young men in the crowd watching. Coaches tend to be creatures of habit. Sometimes we have noon kickoff, sometimes 3.30, sometimes we think a noon kickoff goes into whatever it is. Night kickoff, what's your schedule on Saturday? You know, we'll, we'll let them sleep in a little bit. You know, we practice in the mornings um, every day, and so I think it'll be good for them to get some rest. Um, you know, we'll have a late brunch, uh, stretch them out a little bit midday, you know, allow them to sort of get off their feet, watch some games, and then, um, you know, try to arrive to the stadium about two hours prior to kickoff and then start our pregame routine. You know, it's early in the season, but I think already we've talked about the resilience that your team has shown. What do you like the most? What, what, I don't know if it's, it surprised you the most, but what do you like the most as you get ready to head into conference play uh, next week? Uh, just like they, they don't uh, panic and they don't, uh, they don't overreact. Um, you know, when things go, go bad, they, they just sort of put their head down, go to work, and on to the next play. So you got to have a short memory. you got to log information when you, when you have – um, unsuccessful plays or unsuccessful drives, uh, but you also got to have a short memory to, to be able to go succeed and, and not let one play affect the next. That tone has to be set, though, by the head coach. Even keel is the key. You want to be, be excited, but you also need to be on an even keel. Yeah, you know, it's my job to let the players sort of ride the highs of the momentum um, and to bring them out of the lows. Um, and in order to do that, I've got to be – even kill myself, you know, if I, if I start overreacting or going to panic mode, then uh, so will everybody else. And so um, I'll be it hard to do at times because you are, you are competitive and um, you get the juices flowing a little bit, um, but i, I got to be level-headed. Congratulations on win number one. Let's go after win number two on Saturday. Absolutely, boiler up. All right, Wes Scott, our engineer tonight. Our producer is Ethan Sargent. Video by Corey Palm Incorporated. He pays me to say that, by the way. Uh, we've got the Boilermakers and the Syracuse Orange coming up at uh, 7.30 kickoff. 6.30 will be our airtime, and we'll be here next Tuesday for the Ryan Walters Show. For the coach and for all our players, this is Tim Newton. We'll see you next week. Good night, everybody.